Hmm. What's Serious Sharing Master next? I got it. Inuzuka Naruto. Let's do it. Yeah, soldiers, it's Bunny Game Series Construction Video, and this is What If Naruto Was in Inuzuka Part 1 Remastered. Yeah, this is a series I did a long time ago that I never really finished, but let's work on the series again. I, I really like the series. I know a lot of you guys actually did as well, so yeah, let's do this. But before I get into this, shout out to all of you guys watching the video, shout out to my socials, and without further ado, we can get right into the story. So, how will Naruto become an Inuzuka? Well, let's go back to Naruto's birth. After Mito and Kushina kick the bucket, we'll see a bit of a difference in the original canon occur. As Hiruzuma realized while he wants to take care of Naruto and, oh my god, actually try to honor the promise that he made with Kushina before she died, he can't really do that as him taking him in would probably raise some suspicions of him among the five great nations, since why out of all orphans he taken Naruto? Not wanting to have the five great nations put two and together between who Naruto's actual father is, he rules himself out. He then looks over his other options. Jiraiya is unavailable like in Ken as he's dealing with his fight network and Kakashi, while he might be responsible enough to take care of him despite being pretty young, Kakashi has his own personal demons to deal with so he rules him out as well. He also cannot give him to Uchiha clan because while Mikoto and Kushina were friends, the Leaf Village and the Uchiha clan are going for a bit of a rough patch right now, so he rules him out as well. Hopefully it'll get better. Spoiler, he risen, it will not. Hiruzen is a little bit frustrated as he's running out of options to, you know, give Naruto the love of a parent, but then he remembers that Mitsu and Kushina were good friends with one of the members of the Inuzuka clan, Sume. So, he will call her up for a meeting and will decide to tell her the situation. Including about Naruto being a Ninetale since if she's going to be his mother, she might as well know that as well. Sume, who has been trying to fill in the void of the loss of her husband a couple months after Kiva's birth, is really tempted to take the offer, especially since she also gets a piece of Minato and Kashina as well. By the way, I am seeing that Kiva's father is dead at this point because, well, we don't really see him at all in Naruto, I believe. And on top of that, Kiva's official birthday is July 7th, while the Ninetales attack was in October, so it all lines up. Anyway, Sume will ask, is there really no one else who can take care of him? Hiruzen will shake his head. Well, as a Yuzuka, I can't back down from a challenge, and taking care of free children sounds like my kind of challenge. Sume responds with a feral grin. You've got a deal. Hiruzen will smile, and Sume will take her now adopted son home. Over the next eight years, she will raise Naruto very well. In addition to taking care of him, she'll also get him a partner pup named Yoan, which I name after a dog from To Your Eternity. For those of you who don't know what that anime is, I implore you all to watch it, although fair warning, it is one of those sad anime. Like if you heard of anime like Anohana, Your Line April, and other anime like that, yeah, this one's one of those. Anyways, Naruto and Ki will have a tight bomb with each other, which makes sense since they are family, or in animal terms, a pack. Naruto and Kiba will often train together, and Naruto will be pretty educated in Inuzuka Taijutsu due to the amount of sparring he does with Kiba. Naruto will notice villagers giving him glares at times, which is something he does not understand, but since in his timeline he actually, you know, has a family that cares for him, it doesn't bother him as much as in canon. And yes, no matter the what if, Dons was still gonna tell the villagers that Naruto has the Nine Tails. Or if it is in the hands of another person, Donzo will still spill the beans because Donzo sucks and wants power and blah 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 blah. When Naruto and Kiba enter the academy, both right away will do pretty decently, although Naruto does struggle with the clone jutsu. Sume will notice this and will be smart enough to ask Hiruzen about Naruto learning the Shadow Clone Jutsu, since he could theoretically handle using an advanced jutsu that requires a lot of chakra due to his quote unquote situation. Hiruzen will agree and Sume will teach Naruto Shadow Clone Jutsu, and to her surprise, he can make more than two clones, he can make ten pretty easily without suffering any major side effects. So he's doing a lot better than she thought he would do. Naruto will also the years the academy, learn a couple of the Inuzuka clan jutsu, and combine it with the Shadow Clone makes him a very, very dangerous fire from close range. These jutsu, by the way, are Fain of Fane, Beast Mimicry, and on top of that, a technique he created with his Shadow Clones, Wild Barrage. 
By the way, one thing I want to point out real quick. No, you do not need to have any Inusuke Keke Genkai or whatever. There's no such thing as an Inusuke Keke Genkai. It's just really Jutsu that are really secret techniques. That no one except other clan members can learn. If they're born into it, of course. Oh yeah, I can't forget. He also has as good of a nose as Kiba. Naruto at this point does get a bump over his brother. But Kiba is stronger in his timeline than he was in canon. So... He really isn't that far behind. Naruto will of course grab him because why wouldn't he? And he'll be taken out for celebration with his clan. Meanwhile, Misuki will get his butt kicked for stealing scroll ceiling by Anbu members or something, or Hiruzen. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's Naruto, some Anbu, or even Sakura, Misuki will still fall like a lawn chair. A bit later, Naruto will be told about the truth about him having Nine Tails. Since Sumi was able to get Hiruzen to budge on her telling him about the Nine Tails, since he is now a ninja. And Naruto will take it about as well as he can, accepting that he has a fox inside of him, and thankfully his mom finally told him why certain villagers hate him. Kiba, who is also in the room for this revelation, will accept this as well, and will say that even if he has this fox inside of him, he is still his brother. Plus, even if that fox can give you some advantages, I'll still kick your ass regardless. Really? Who has the better win-loss record in our spars, Naruto counters? That'll change soon, blondie. Keep dreaming. Both boys will then growl, and then Sume will clear her throat, unleashing an aura that only a mother can summon to put the fear of God in them, and they have to stop. Otherwise, they're dead. After a bit of training for the week, the team selection will begin, and we'll see actual new teams since what if. Somewhat. Nars and Ki will be on a team because it makes sense, and the other team member is Hanada to create a nice trio for tracking and close combat. Meanwhile, Sasuke, Shino, and Sakura will be on team, as I feel like Shino would have gotten good enough grades to be part of the academic all-star team, which is the theme of this team. I mean, Sasuke was Rookie of the Year, Sakura was Kunoichi of the Year, and Shino probably wasn't that far behind. And Shino is pretty nice on this team, as he can drain someone pretty quickly with his bugs, and Sasuke and Sakura eventually can fear I could do cleanup, so not a bad team at all. Plus, Shino and Sasuke probably wouldn't butt heads as often as Naruto and Sasuke did in the original timeline, so the teamwork is a little bit more solid with this team. Just gotta fix Sakura a little bit. And the last team is the Ino Shikacho trio. I'm pretty sure you already figured it out, but Kuronai will be the sensei of Naruto, Hinata, and Kiba as she appears and will take her team to a random area in the village. Ask some insane questions as Kakashi, though she's been more open about herself. And we can skip all the rest and move on to the actual test, which is using teamwork to catch Kuronai. Or at least show enough teamwork that she passes them. Which is easy enough for a trio to do, since Kiba and Naruto are brothers to get along. Though they do have a rivalry, they do generally get along when it comes to fighting together. And Hinata isn't really someone who's going to conflict all the time due to, I guess, quote-unquote reasons. I mean, yeah, she does like Naruto in the story, but she ain't a fangirl like Sakura was. The only thing that could ever prove to be an issue is her fainting, but she's not going to do that in the middle of a battlefield. The trio will pass and will be officially a team. Naruto high fives his brother while he also sings the praises of Hinata for her part as well, which will cause Hinata to blush. Naruto will then notice Hinata's face become red, touch her forehead, ask if she has a fever, and then of course she will promptly faint. Naruto wonders what happened, and Kiba and Kuronai will just facepalm as Kiba makes a note to make his brother less dense and play the role of Wayne Man for him. Though that will have to be saved for the next part. Naruto and Ki will give Sume the good news, and after a round of celebration, we'll see Naruto and his team work on chores for the village, I mean, D-rank missions. However, a change from his timeline is what this team learns under Kuronai. I think in what is like this, it makes sense for Team 7 or whatever team Naruto is on to learn the tree climbing exercise. And that is actually what Naruto and company will learn in this what if as well, because it makes sense, especially for someone like Kuronai, since Genshutsu does rely on chakra control. Anyways, Naruto and company will learn the tree climb exercise, and since Naruto and Kiba are brothers, naturally they turn us into a competition, which Naruto will of course win, but Hinata will cross both of them due to having higher chakra control. Naruto will probably praise Hinata, and of course Hinata will blush will accept the praise. Kiba decides to bring Naruto to the side and will ask him, so, what do you think of Hinata? Naruto answered that he thinks that she's a nice person and a pretty good teammate. Naruto will then be asked by Kiba 
what do you think of her as a girl? Narts a blush a little and says, well, she's pretty and I kind of like her, so go ask her out, Kiba urges, but I don't know what to do and she probably doesn't like me. Trust me, she does. How can you tell? And this is why I have to help your dense ass. Hey! Kiba chuckles but then says, as for your other problem, I'd say be yourself or something, but since I'm not an expert in this, I don't want to actually give you bad advice. Just ask mom. Alright. Thanks, Kiba. Anytime, bro. First, this group will have their first C rank under current rank before the land of Ways arc. Reason me this team probably, no, does have better teamwork than the original Team 7, and they can definitely handle a bunch of bandits. And they do so, giving the team some of that experience under their belt. When it comes to ways, teammate doesn't get the mission directly, but they'll get it as a bit of an emergency request. What I mean is that when Kakashi delivers an emergency request to Hiruzen via Pakun about the situation in the land of waves, Hiruzen will send another game team to help them out since there were not a lot of other joining available. And this team is, of course, well, teammates. Nards and Kibar Pump to go traveling and do this type of mission, though Kurnai warns them to not do anything reckless. Eventually, the two groups will meet and will be set off to Waze, where the group meets Zabaza along the way. And this battle kind of goes differently, as Zabaza is versing Kakashi and Kurnai, and he'll get caught in Kurnai's tree buying technique, which will cause Haku to have to bail him out. The group will move out, and we will now get into the other part of the Waze arc. This part will go the same, except Shino, Hanai, Kiba, and Naruto and Sasuke we find Haku, and the five again will actually pull off an upset as Shino uses bugs over time to drain Haku of his chakra, and keep a Naruto along with their dogs will finish off Haku with a dual fang over fang. Pretty much light work for this duo, but it does help that Haku does not want to go for the kill. Anyways, Haku will still sacrifice himself and Zabuza will still die, as waves will still be free like in can because why wouldn't it be? Now if all that out of the way, we can now move on to tuning exams. Oh yeah, by the way, the bridge is still called the Great Naruto Bridge. Yes, let's now move on to tuning exams. Anyways, let's go over the next two months before tuning exams, though. Naruto coming will train a bunch of fans before tuning exams arc, which will obviously include them wearing the war walking exercise, which is really good. Naruto himself will learn a couple of other techniques himself, such as the Shadow Shuriken Jutsu, which is going to be pretty good with the Shadow Clone Jutsu, while Kiba and him learn a couple of other techniques themselves from the Inosuka clan, while Hanana improves on her gentle fist techniques, mainly the furry two palms, and works on a couple of other stuff as well. Naruto and Hanan over the month also get closer to each other as well as, you know, he's following his mama's advice. Hey mom, I would pipe him. She has dog breath, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, the start of Shinx hands will occur and we will see the senseis be called up and we'll then see a similar interaction between Naruto and Konkuro and the other sand siblings, though this time, Naruto will all of a sudden appear behind Konkuro and put a kunai to his throat, which will cause him to let Konohamaru go and Conker will be shocked as he did not even see Naruto move. Uh, he realizes that Naruto is pretty fast, naturally. Gar will then appear and he will scare the crap out of his siblings and will tell Naruto he is interested in fighting him. Naruto grins and of course Yoan, Naruto's dog, will bark as they are both really, really excited for his tuning exams. Along with, of course, Kiba and Hana a little bit. The trio will train for the rest of the week, and in the blink of an eye, the day of the exams rolls around. The music brothers are pretty excited, their blood is pumping, and their competitive instincts are going to overdrive. While well, Hinata isn't nearly as competitive or enthusiastic as a duo, I mean, she's can't she can't really be she doesn't have those animal instincts but she is pretty excited regardless and wants to show her clan that she isn't useless and that she has gotten a lot stronger over the past few months she has improved her kyuguri technique and she will show them all that she has changed including of course neji the trio will enter the academy and we'll see the trio make it to the academy without instant as the trio will prepare for its tuning exams the trio will then have to deal with the first test which kind of goes the same for the group except Nart uses his partner Yoan to get the answers which isn't the most discreet way of cheating but it's good enough then of course the 10th question will roll around and of course everyone passed with flying colors like they did in original canon and that is about it and the group will then move on to force of death this will also go swimmingly for our Inosuka duo and Hinata well, except they have to see Gar be a menace. Afterwards, Naruto comforts Hinata, as she seems to be very shaken up by how bloodthirsty Gar is. Not that Naruto and Kiba aren't shaken up themselves. But Naruto ended up training his mental health for trauma and gain closer to Hinata. 
I see this as a win-win, unlike the Cowboys training away Amari Cooper last offseason. Norris and company make it to the tower pretty early like the original teammate did, and we'll now see them wait for everyone else. As they wait, the last team to arrive is Team 7, and little do they know, Sasuke has gotten himself a hick. I, I, I mean the curse mark. Now for this one, I will be utilizing a random number generator in order to spice the student exams up a little bit. First off is Conqueror versus Choji. Due to Choji being a slower moving attacker, all Conqueror has to do is dodge and then wait for him to disengage his expanse in Jutsu. After that, all he has to do is tie him up with his crow puppet and he takes a dub. Next up is Naruto versus Zaku, who has his armors bandaged up. However, Naruto does not waste any time with Zaku as after he gets hit with his surprise decapitain airwaves, he hits him with a fan of her fang, giving him the knockout and the win. Kiba and Naruto high five, and Hanada congratulates Naruto on his hard earned victory. Moving on, we have Kiba versus Yoroi. Yoroi will pin down Kiba at first, trying to absorb all of his chakra, but will then get bitten by Akamaru and will be promptly kicked off by Kiba. Kiba will then fire off his own fang over fang at Yoroi, earning him the win. Naruto and Kiba will high five, while Hanada congratulates her teammate as we wait for a next matchup. Next up, Tamari versus Shikamaru. Shikamaru will actually pull some shenanigans similar to Cannon, but will still surrender, which is gonna set off the same event of Shikamaru and Tamari being a pairing. All Naruto and the rest of the Genin can do is sweat drop. Next up is Misumi versus Neji. Neji will absolutely smoke him with the 64 palms, displaying unbelievable power and name him the knockout and the win. All Hana can do is slightly shudder before Naruto comforts her with his hand on her shoulder. This will allow Hana's resolve to go up as she knows that she might have to face Neji in the third round of tuning exams and does not want to surrender to him anymore. She will break her fate of being weak and she will prove to him that fate is BS. Next up is Sasuke versus Ino. Sasuke wins easily, moving on. I'm pretty sure Ino would rather not want to bar find Sasuke at all because she doesn't want to hurt his handsome face, quote unquote. Come on, my boy Naruto looks better than him. No homo, of course. Anyways, next matchup is Lee versus Dosu. Lee thrashes Dosu this time since he already has a grasp on what to do against him, which allows Lee to move on to the next round. Cue the beach and Guy Sensei and all that other stuff. Next up is Sakura versus Ten Ten. Ten Ten wins easily. Moving on. Next up is Shino versus Hinata. Hinata has a distinct advantage with her Byakugan as she can easily see whether or not Shino is using his insect clones or not, and can easily find out where he is. She hits Shino with the furry two causing him to surrender, netting Hinata the victory, and some praise from Naruto. Finally, Ken versus Gara. Gara kills her with his sand coffin, horrifying the rest of the kids in the stands. Hinata trembles, and Kiba and Naruto are also really shook. I mean, can you blame them? This is something that's really traumatizing for anyone to see. Ah, well, who cares? They're ninja. Like, who cares about their trauma? Move on to new tuning games and go fight some more. Go, come on, go, 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 go. We'll now move on to the train time skip where Naruto still trains with Jiraiya like in canon. Over next month, however, we'll see Naruto not only get the Toast Summon contract, but also the Rasengan. Though he just barely gets it before the one month train time skip is over. Hinata, meanwhile, is working on improving herself before her fight with Neji arrives, while Kiba, Sasuke, and everyone else are going for their own training arcs. Meanwhile, Dosu will still attempt to kill Gara, but he will then realize he's not the main character, he's a side character, and will get promptly demolished by him. The only change here is that one, this doesn't impact his shooting exams at all, and two, he tries to kill him for killing Ken. That's about it. Now, we move on to the third round of the cheating exams. For new matchups, I'm gonna go from least interesting to the most interesting, where we'll start off with a pretty interesting fight in 1010 versus Conqueror. Wait, he surrendered? Come on, that's so annoying. What's the next matchup? Hinata versus Neji? All right, I can buy with this. Hinata and Neji each have their own Seraph, with Neji declaring that Faye will have him win this battle, just like how she is always Faye to be weak. Hinata will vow to prove Neji wrong, and a battle begins. Hinata will actually be able to keep up with Neji, and Neji is really surprised at this, but knows he can still win. When Hinata tries to strike at Neji with a furry two palm strike, he unleashes the Kaiten, though she is just barely able to back up and stop herself from getting hit by the dome. Neji then tries to finish the fight with a 64 palms, but Hinata comes back with the protection of the eight trigrams. One of the few times I wish Filler was canon. It was a technique she worked on during the one month train time skip to match with Neji's Kaiten. Neji is frustrated and says, Stop trying to defy your fate, Hinata. You will never beat me. You will always be fated to be weak. Hinata shakes her head and says, 
No, I will not lose here. I got a team who believes in me, and I refuse to continue to let anyone bring me down anymore. I will win this! In her thoughts, she says, I will win this for myself, and for you, Naruto. The battle continues, and both ninja are getting tired. Ninja will think he has gotten the edge, as he's able to get Hina within his field of divination, and hits her with the 64 palms. However, haha, you actually thought it was the real me, but it was actually a shadow clone. A technique cannot incorporate into her arsenal in order to beat Neji, and in a way, Naruto is helping her beat Neji. All Naruto can do is smile as him teaching her that technique is about to pay off. Hina unleashes her own 64 palms, and in a stunner, she will beat Neji. She collapses on all fours, having used up a lot of chakra, but she is one. Naruto congratulates her and will now move on to Tamari versus Kiba. It is a hard fought battle with Kiba getting demolished by Tamari's win, but casts the heart of a lion. She will not be taken down so easily. He has that dog in him, literally and figuratively. He keeps going, able to land a flurry of blows on Tamari before finishing her off with a fan over fan, winning him the battle. Naruto congratulates Kiba and Kiba wishes him luck as his battle is next. Naruto nods and will get ready to face off against Sasuke Uchiha. So now we're going to move on to the last two fights that we're going to have to talk about. First off is Naruto versus Sasuke. Naruto tells his partner Yoan that this is their moment and that they better not let it pass them like he's Eminem. And then Naruto is face to face with Sasuke who showed up just in time. Both fires ray themselves and the fight begins. Sasuke tries to keep Naruto back with his fire jutsu, but Naruto is too fast for that. Sasuke, however, is neck and neck with him in terms of speed, and it provides one of the best fights of the tournament as both fires are not giving an inch. However, it comes to a head when Naruto uses his Shadow Clone jutsu, and a combination of a food pill, the Inusuka clan style taijutsu, and of course the Shadow Clone jutsu, creates a very powerful technique in the Inuzuka barrage. And Sasuke is going to be the unlucky opponent that Naruto uses this on, as the technique involves him going wild like an animal to rapidly strike an opponent. And it also gives Naruto a little bit of a speed boost. This allows Naruto to land a bunch of bullets on Sasuke, including a nasty blow to his stomach, which causes him to cough up blood. Naruto then falls it up with a faint over fame, which severely hurts Sasuke. Sasuke, however, is not one to give up and decides to unleash his new jutsu, the Shidori, while Naruto decides to debut his Rasengan. The clash happens, and with how beat up Sasuke is, Naruto takes to win. Now, Sasuke could have used his curse mark, but he is not too keen on using it. In fact, he wasn't really that keen on using it in the original timeline, but this L is definitely gonna shake him a bit. Foreshadowing. Finally, we got the main event, Rock Lee vs. Gaara. Rock Lee has trained harder than ever before and will be a much bigger force than in canon, which makes this fight a lot more interesting than I initially thought it would be. Lee will be able to hit Gar right away as he has already taken off the weight since Guy Orin 2 due to the fact that Gar is a menace. Lee will be able to get in a couple of clean hits on Gara and Gar gets really, really pumped for this, as he has that maniacal look in his eyes. Not good. Gar will eventually put himself in the cocoon like he can, and Lee will debut a technique that I have created for him, the Leaf Dragon Fist. A shockwave will envelop the arena, and Gar feels the brunt of the impact, and feels something come out of his mouth. It's blood. Cue the amazing scream Gara has, and the invasion has now finally begun. Everyone gets ready to fight for the village, and while that's all going on, Lee goes after Gara to see what the hell is going on with him. Naruto sees this and decides to go help out Lee with the rest of his team and Shikamaru backing him up. Like in canon, of course. There are two small changes in this arc. First up is the Naruto vs. Gaara fight. In this timeline, Lee, Kiba, and Hinata are stuck in Gaara's hand, along with Yoan. However, Naruto, not being one to give up, will fight for his comrades and his dog, but first he will ask why Gaara is doing all of this nonsense. Gaara will then explain his past, and Naruto's eyes widen in shock as he realizes that he could have been treated just like Gaara if some things went wrong in his life. What would he have become then? However, he does not want to abandon a fellowship in Turkey like him, and will try to help him throughout the fight like in canon. A bunch of the fight between VC powerhouses does remain the same, except Naruto finishes Gara with a Rasengan, allowing Naruto to get the victory. Although he is really exhausted like in canon. Naruto then talks to Gara the same way like he did in canon, because he's the GOAT of Takno Jutsu. 
and Gar will be able to go for the same character development like in the original story. And here is the second change that I wanted to talk about for this arc, and that is there is a new fight. Ten Ten versus Conqueror. Yes, Miss No Screen Time gets to fight freaking Conqueror. And she's able to win by using a seal that cuts off the chakra connections to the puppet, which she prepared for in order to fight Conqueror. She then knocks out Conqueror with a barrage of both staff strikes and nets herself a W. So we trade a Shino W for a Ten Ten W. Is that a fair trade? Let me know in the comments. All right, now, like in can, the Fertile Kage has kicked the bucket. So we need to cue the search for Tsunade arc. Naruto will go to Jiraiya like in can, and he will learn the Shadow Explosion Jutsu during the trip, since Jiraiya has taught him the Rasengan already. Meanwhile, we will have Itachi and Kisame go after Naruto, but in this timeline, we will see Sasuke bring Kiba with him. Unwomely, of course. Sasuke is annoyed because Itachi seems more interested in Naruto than him, and will want to show Itachi that is a Sake, but he will get stomped. Kiba, meanwhile, is gonna fight Kisame, and it's not a fun matchup for him at all because Kisame is built different. Dry, however, will come up clutch, but due to this utter humiliation at the hands of Itachi, Sasuke is gonna take a certain path that we all know he's going to take. Naruto and Dry will eventually find Tsunade, and they will come into the same conflict like in canon with the Okage stuff. A bunch of the same events happen like in canon. Except in this arc, Yoan, Naruto's dog, gets held by Tsunade on her pillows, lucky dog, and will also get held by Shizune, who, while she doesn't have the most, uh, well, the biggest pillows, she's still a fine waifu, so still, lucky dog. Anyways, another bet in this timeline is Naruto has to earn Tsunade's respect, because, well, he can't really complete the Rasengan because he's already completed it, Plus, he's already completed the Shadow Explosion Jutsu, so there's a limited amount of options this guy has. So, the bet is that again, he has to earn Tsunade's respect, which he will earn after a well-fought battle against Kabuto, in which he does dominate him with some of the Inusuke techniques, but Kabuto is still Kabuto, so he's still very slippery and annoying to deal with. So, after Naruto fires off his Shadow Explosion Jutsu, Weiss against Kabuto, he then slams him again with the Rasengan. In any canon timeline, Naruto must slam Kabuto with the Rasengan because Kabuto needs to be humbled badly. As a result, Tsunade respects Naruto and decides to give him her necklace and will agree to become Hokage. We are picking up right before the Sasuke retrieval arc. In the beginning, after the search for Tsunade arc, we'll see Naruto come back to the village and Hinata will be pretty glad to see him. Naruto decides that now is the time to stop playing around and decides to ask Hinata out on a date, proving himself to be a lot better than Kazuya from Rent a Girlfriend and Dallas Cowboys combined because Naruto can seal the deal. The next day, Sasuke will be agitated and we all know the reason why. He will decide to challenge Naruto to a fight and will be promptly demolished by him again because he decided to do this fight before he fully recovered in the hospital like he did in the original timeline. So Naruto is 2-0 against Sasuke so far in big fights between them. Kind of like the Lions versus the Packers last season. Then the promotions arrive and Naruto actually gets the tuning promotion because why not give it to him? I, I can't really find any better candidates and we got a freaking massive arc coming up. Afterwards, Naruto will chill and meanwhile, Sasuke decides that offering up his Yonichiya body to Roshimaru is not such a Bad idea anymore as long as he gets to kill his brother he defects like in canon and it is now time for the sasuke retrieval arc sakura will ask for everyone to retrieve sasuke and naruto will say he will do his best however in this timeline naruto does not have as much of an attachment to sasuke make a mental note of that he and Shikamaru will work together to form a similar plan to canon, but that will end up creating the same matchups as last time. Although, in this timeline, Rockley will join up with the group since he never had to get surgery. However, all that changes is Naruto is allowed to get to Sasuke a bit more quickly than in canon, and we're gonna fast forward to the Valley of the End fight. Sasuke laughs maniacally, revealing his curse mark 1 state. How does it feel, Naruto? Going up against my evolved form. Naruto raises an eyebrow and says, you got tattoos? Sasuke sees and talks about him receiving the curse mark from Rochimaru, and the only reason he didn't use it against Naruto was because he wanted to use his own power and did not want to be a pawn to Orochimaru. However, things have changed, and now that he has his power, 
you will show that he is superior to him and by extension be a bit closer to being Itachi. Both individuals will strike each other as they collide. At first they appear even, however Naruto gets the upper hand with Yoan providing support. Sasuke gets annoyed by the dog's constant interference and kicks it away and little does Sasuke know he has just triggered Naruto's inner Baba Yaga otherwise known as John Wick. Rest in peace, Lance Reddick. Naruto gets pissed and summons this man Beast Clone Technique, and to piss off Naruto unleashes a new technique that he has been working on for a while, known as the Beast Shredder. A technique that combines the Fane over Fane with the Unizuka Barrage. This will do a lot of damage to Sasuke, but he is able to remain sane due to the increased endurance from the Curse Mark. Sasuke is pissed, as even with all that he has right now, he cannot track Naruto because he's too fast for his eyes. He becomes so pissed off that he evolves his shark onto the freak Tomoe state, and the fight suddenly turns towards Sasuke's favor. As Sasuke stands over Naruto after he has beaten the crap out of him, he says, See, this is your limit. With the power I have acquired, I have finally advanced to the final stage of my Sharingan. Now you can't do anything to stop me. He then grabs Yoan by the neck and fires up a Chidori including stopping me from killing your dog. Naruto of course gets pissed and will go into the mix of the one tail state and John Wick. He stops him by the way from killing Yoan by the way. I'm not killing a dog. <laughs> the, um, no, I would not. Naruto starts dominating Sasuke right back as the speed he already had in base increases and that makes it hard for Sasuke to track him. After getting thrashed some more by Naruto and of course Yoan by his bites and moral support, Sasuke is like, time to show you my true form, and unleashes a stage 2 state. Both fires are even, but Sasuke has sustained a lot of damage from Naruto. To be fair, so is Naruto from Sasuke. Sasuke strikes at Naruto again, however this time, it explodes, revealing it to be an explosive Shadow Clone. It blows up, and all of a sudden, there is Naruto with a Rasengan. This is the equivalent of hitting a Pokemon with a neutral attack so that you can guarantee a kill on the enemy Pokemon with your super effective attack. Sasuke immediately fires up a Chidori and it clashes there, but Naruto comes out the winner of the battle as Sasuke is knocked out, although a couple seconds later, Naruto falls to the ground, non-conscious, but his body can't physically move anymore. Then. Kawato will appear to get a Rochimaru his Yon Uchiha body, while Kuruna and Kakashi appear to help out Naruto and get Sasuke. But they are given no choice but to give up Sasuke in order to prevent Kawato from killing Naruto and Yoan, of course. Again, we can't forget a little Daga. We're not having Naruto become John Wick. After that arc is over with, Naruto is glad to know that Kiba's gonna be alright. And meanwhile, Jirai will talk with him about going on a train trip with him. Naruto is a bit annoyed, understandably, because he had just clutched up and has now started to get into a relationship with Hinata, which Kiba congratulate him on. But if he doesn't go on his training trip, there's a good chance he's not going to be able to handle the Akatsuki. Naruto will tell all this to Hinata, and they will agree to put their relationship on a bit of a pause until Naruto comes back, of course. They go on one last date before he has to depart, and of course, everyone is there. Sume, Hinata, Kiba, all his friends, everyone will make it there, but Naruto has one thing on his mind in his new timeline. After talking now with Jiraiya in this canon, he decides to give up on Sasuke, and the next time that he faces off against him, he will consider lethal force if he has to. He's not as intent on saving Sasuke in this timeline, because he doesn't have the same relationship he had with him when he was on Team 7. Will this actually change anything? Who knows, but keep that in mind for the future. Naruto will say goodbye to his friends, family, his girlfriend, and of course, his mother and will set off with his little puppy Yoan as the freer train time skip has begun. What will Naruto learn? Naruto over the next few years will learn a couple of new tricks. First, he's gonna learn the Ross and Shuriken after being able to acquire the wind nature transformation from Jiraiya. He'll also be able to acquire stage mode during the time skip, although something unique happens when he trains the frogs on Mount Miyaboku. Instead of the traditional frog stage mode, he unlocks an Inu or dog stage mode, which Jiraiya and Fukasaka believe stems from his clothes 
relationship with dogs. Third, he will learn other wind style techniques while also learning how to incorporate the wind nature transformation into his Inusuka Taijutsu, making him more deadly at close range, while also acquiring some long range techniques to make him a bigger threat. In addition to that, he also gets stronger in Inusuka clan technique, though that's because, well, he has scrolls from his mother. Finally, we can't really ignore this, he attempts at bonding with Kurama. Naruto will start meditating into its mindscape to try to talk to him. One day, you will have an interesting conversation after one of these attempts succeeds. Naruto will be sent into the sewer mindscape and we face to face with the fox. So you've arrived, Brett. Kurama greeted. Naruto nodded and decides to rip the band-aid off. So how do I access more of your power? Kurama then replies, You're like so many other humans. Always want to use my power. You can't even consider it for a second to work with Fox. No, you must use me as a chakra outlet. Naruto reply, Well, have you really done any favors for any of your past Jinchuriki? Kurama will reply, No, because they're all the same. I'll forever hate humans because all they see me is it's a tool, a monster. Why should I work with them? Why should I work with those who only view me as a weapon? You and your village are the same. They use you and fellow shinobi as weapons to go out and complete a mission. It doesn't matter if it'll cost them your life. The only thing that matters is the mission. You and I know that that is complete bullshit, Naruto replies. You have seen people in this village genuinely care about me and treat me not as a monster, not as a tool, but as a person. Yes, there are a lot of people who respect me for how strong I am as a shinobi, but I know that there are those who care about my well-being. My mom, my brother, Hinata, Sensei, and even my old classmates. Oh yeah, can't forget about Granny too. And what will happen if those people are gone or turn against you? What will you have then? Then I'll keep fighting until my last breath until I either save them or honor their memory. And I'll continue to find other people to protect because that's who I am. An animal that keeps surviving, no matter the scars that I have been inflicted with. Rama snorts. Easy for you to say, but can you actually follow through when the chips are down and it ends up happening? Nar to his quiet before you responded with one word. Yes. Ha! Huh. We'll see. Kurma said. You're lucky. I like you somewhat more than my other jailers, but that's only because you're an Inusuka. What does my clan lineage have to do, Nar to start, but then he realized something. Wait, I get it. Foxes are said to be canines. That's why. Kurma nodded. You may not actually be an Inusuka, but you know the techniques well enough. Plus, you have that little dog too, Yoan, who's becoming a bit bigger now. But... I only like you more than the average human, meaning I still hate you. If that is the case, I will rid that hate in your heart. And instead of seeing you as a tool, I want to see you as an ally, maybe even a friend, Naruto responds. What? Kurama exclaims. I can admit I am not the sharpest tool in the shed but I can understand when someone feels like they are not seen as an equal. That's why I want to see you as a friend. <laughs> if you think you can get rid of hundreds of years of hatred, you are very naive, Brett. We'll see, Naruto utters before he's dragged out of the mindscape. He now had a very clear goal on his mind. We finally cut back to Naruto's return to the Leaf Village. He's able to meet up with Hinata, who is really happy to see him along with his brother Kiba. Hinata talks about how she has been trained pretty hard and she's gotten a lot stronger, and Naruto says he cannot wait to see the results of said training. Kiba warns Naruto he has probably caught up to him at this point as well, and Naruto will be like, We'll see. Kurama will call up her team for a test after all the time Naruto has been away, and then both teams will begin the test. Kurama finds out that she's not in for a fun time, as the close range fires of Naruto, Kiba, and Hinata prove to be a bit overwhelming, especially when they are aggressive enough that she can't really cast her Genjutsu. So, the group will end up passing, especially since Naruto can also break out of Genjutsu at this point, which, by the way, probably should have been something that he should have been better at in the original timeline, but I I'm just a random guy on the internet. M maybe you guys have a disagreement there. The team will then eventually get notified that Gar has been shanghai and will head over to the Sand Village immediately. Now, over time, Skip has been learning medical Genjutsu from 
Sonate, and we're able to heal Conqueror and prove to be a problem for Saucery. This is due to the fact that she can actually see Saucery's heart and chakra points, meaning that she can easily target those, which proves to be a massive problem for the Puppet Master. The rest of the arc does remain the same, as even though Colonel Knight does replace Kakashi in this timeline, Naruto has Sage Mode in this timeline, meaning that even though Colonel Knight can't really use the freaking Kamui stuff that Kakashi could use in the original timeline, Naruto just ends up launching freaking Ross and Shurikens at Tatera and hopes one of them sticks. One of them does, but Daedara, the slippery bastard that he is, is able to somehow escape. And of course, Gar will end up getting revived by Chio's sacrifice. The only major change in this timeline is Naruto is not going to go as crazy with the Ninetales tracker as he did in the original timeline, because he's at least trying to establish a bit of a rapport with Kurama in this timeline, and Kurama does somewhat like this guy. Only somewhat. He still hates humans, but he sort of likes him, as I said earlier, due to Naruto and him sharing a bit of a canine ship. Hana will then reveal to Naruto that she has info about where Sasuke Uchiha is, and in this timeline, Sai will still join up with the team as a fourth member on the mission, while Yamato ends up becoming their new sensei because it is found out that after the mission that Kuronai has become pregnant. And while her team is pretty happy for her, it also means that Kuronai will be out of action for the foreseeable future, meaning that again Yamato will take over. Naruto's blood is racing as he does have intentions of capturing Sasuke, but if Sasuke does not intend to, to cooperate, he does plan to kill him. We now are going to cover the worst arc in all of Naruto, the Tenchi Bridge arc. I again probably know that there are going to be some people who like that arc, but to me it is probably the worst arc in all of Naruto. Naruto and company being Hinata, Kiba, Sai, and Yamato will go to Tenchi Bridge and in this timeline Naruto is not going to go too crazy over Sasuke and Rushmore's taunts. He's going to approach this a bit more rationally with Sage Mode and Rasen Shuriken. Rushmore is like hell nah I'm out of here and him and Kabuto hightail it out of the Tenchi Bridge but with Yamato's wood clone he's able to follow them and the group is able to make it to Rushmore's base. We cut to me with Sasuke. Naruto will say it's been a long time Sasuke. Sasuke will say well, have you actually gotten stronger, Naruto? If not, you and that overgrown mutt will be dead. I advise you not to look down on us, Sasuke. It could very well cost you your life, Naruto responds, as he dispels the clone he had hidden with Yamato, who captured Kabuto like in canon. Now then, shall we fight? Naruto has to grin as his sage mode activates. Sasuke is perplexed as to what Naruto just did, but he decides it's not the big of a deal as he's gotten really, really strong during the time skip. It turns out it is a very big deal because Naruto is able to smack Sasuke around, which surprises Sasuke a lot, as Naruto is supposed to be behind him post time skip. Who changed the script like this? Joke aside, Sasuke is shocked he's getting manhandled like this by Naruto when all he did was add tattoos to his eyes, and his eyes also changed color, but but Sasuke is still annoyed about this. Pretty hypocritical coming from the guy that changed his eye color just to get ahead. This being, however, is going to motivate Sasuke to become stronger later on. And by later, I mean after his arc, because when Rochimaru arrives, the gang decides it may not be a good idea to fight both the snake and Sasuke, which makes a lot of sense, unfortunately. As much as they want to be of the snake, the gang cannot take on both Orochimaru and Sasuke at the same time. However, Yamato is able to shane high Kabuto, which does anger Orochimaru a bit because the boy he Rightfully, Shane Hyde is now gone. Later, we'll see a team unwind after a half successful, half failed mission. Naruto and Hana will go on a date, and on the way, they meet Kuronai and Asuma at the restaurant BBQ. Naruto will relay details of the mission to Kuronai, and Kuronai will be glad that her students made out of there safely and that they're able to Shane Hyde Kabuto. Naruto will ask how the baby is doing, and Kuronai will respond with, it's still early into the pregnancy, but when it starts kicking, I'll let you and Hana know. Naruto will then give Asuma a menacing glare, and he will tell him that he better be a good father slash future husband to Kuronai, and Asuma will vow that he will, although inside he was sweating bullets. Fun fact, by the way. Kuronai and Asuma's daughter Mirai was most likely, if not 100% born out of wedlock. Why is this important? because Japan really does not like it when children are born outside of marriage. Now, I want you to remember the last time you saw Kuronai with her child during the pain arc in the manga, and then I want you to see if you can recall her ever appearing again after that arc. Am I suggesting something? What? No, of course not. Not at all.
keep that in mind. Anyways, we'll see Naruto in this timeline seek to learn something else in this timeline, which is the Flying Raijin, which will go pretty nicely with his Inusuka techniques. He calls upon Kakashi and Yamato to help him out here, and he's gonna actually be able to get it done by the end of the Hidana Kakuzu arc. Why? Because Naruto is him, just like Jalen Hurts. Meanwhile, speaking of the Hidana Kakuzu arc, we're going to see them cause some chaos, and one of those acts of chaos is Asuma not being able to fulfill his promise to be a good father because he gets killed by Hidana like in canon. Why? Because I'm evil and I constantly need to show Asuma's inability to pay his child support. Like seriously Asuma, how dare you not pay Karunai's child support? Do you not know how to be a responsible father? You can't keep dodging child support like this, you just can't! Anyways, with the news that Asuma has died, Naruto's ready to go to war against the men who make Karunai essentially a widow. They couldn't even get to the wedding crazy. Naruto and Shikamaru are able to handle their business against Kakusu and Hidan respectively, which means we can now move on to the Sasuke versus Itachi fight. Sasuke has been training a lot harder in comparison to Canon, meaning we'll see a stronger Sasuke fight Itachi, especially with Orochimaru inside of his guts. Pause. We'll see Sasuke be able to put more of a fight against Itachi in this timeline. However, Itachi still has the advantage because his hacks are just way too good. He's unable to counter the Yadamir, and that just gives Itachi advantage. Plus, Itachi still has to save Sasuke from having his body taken over by Orochimaru. However, don't worry Sasuke, because Itachi will expire like he's milk, like in canon, and that only causes Sasuke to go for the same stuff as in canon once Oito Shanghai's him. Moving on to the next arc, which is the pain arc, Dry is able to survive his encounter with Pain, with only an arm missing since in this timeline, Dry was able to complete perfect stage mode, mostly because he didn't want to be outdone by a brat. So he'll be able to potentially clap Sinani's cheeks in the future since we all know that Sinani did actually like Jiraiya, which she did not realize until he died. Naruto will not have to be sent away for train because he already has stage mode and the Ross and Shuriken and now the Flying Raijin. So he can now fight Pain face to face. It does not unfortunately go well for him, as even with Sage Mode, Pain's Ziva Path is still a mess for him. Plus, he's not really as perfect as Minto was with the Flying Raijin. Hanada and Kiba will try to help Naruto, and even though they do put up a fight, they don't really stand a chance, and both Hanada and Kiba will die by Pain Smell Rock getting stuck inside their guts. Okay. Massive pause. Naruto will go crazy due to Ninetales Chakra and will eventually have an encounter with Minato. Naruto during that entire meme will ask Minato a couple things such as one, why he put the Ninetales inside of him, and two, how to make the Flying Raijin work a bit better. And Minato will kind of tell him what to do and Naruto thanks Minato for the sound advice. Then Naruto will still clap pain like in original timeline, and then eventually we'll talk to Jutsu Nagato just like in canon, which causes Nagato to revive Hinata and Kiba. I would mention other notable casualties, however, since Naruto was there for the beginning of the fight, less people died in this timeline. On top of that, Tsunade did not have to overexert herself, which means that she remains Hokage in this timeline, which also means that Donzo does not end up having to go to the Five Kage Summit, which could change a bunch of things in this timeline. However, Donzo is not really happy about missing another opportunity to become Okage, so he decides that he's going to enact a final scheme that will usurp him into the Hokage position, and it will have something to do with Rebellion. Our first major change here is we're gonna be witnessing the Five Kage Summit in a new light because instead of Donzo heading to the Five Kage Summit, it is Tsunade because she's not in a coma like she was in canon due to Naruto actually being stronger than he was in the original timeline. She calls upon Naruto to be one of her bodyguards for a trip, as well as being Agent Turkey to be accounted for, with Akatsuki having quote unquote taken Killer B, or so they think. With the summit, there's going to be the main topic at hand, which is Sasuke Uchiha. Naruto in the previous timeline was more on the train of, hey, let's save Sasuke, let's save him, let's save him, let's save him. In this timeline, he is not. Sasuke and Naruto were not really the best of friends to begin with, but on top of that, now Naruto has motivation to want to kill him because, well, he almost tried to kill him. And on top of that, he is also now a terrorist. So that means that Naruto is going to be very, very pro. Let's kill Sasuke. Speaking of Sasuke, the game will then be invaded by both Obito and Mr. Emo Uchiha himself, and he'll ask where Donzo is, to the fact that he is the main man involved in this entire clan massacre fiasco. 
fiasco. Naruto will grant it as he gets another shot at fighting Sasuke, and Naruto throughout the fight with the Sage Mode, which has been improved upon since he actually has practiced with it, and also some of his other abilities, such as putting Wind Chakra into his fist, while also being able to use a Ross and Shuriken. Yeah, Sasuke is not in for a good time. Plus, with the addition of the Flying Thunder God, Naruto is just an even bigger problem for Sasuke, so now Sasuke is down 3-0 like he's a team in the NBA or MLB in the World Series, or the NHL. So, Sasuke is rightfully very frustrated. Eventually, Obito has to play the game of say Sasuke before he dies, and he will calm me out of there in a flash. So now and the rest of Kage are okay, but Obito has decided to declare war. Meanwhile, Danso has decided to make a deal with Obito, which would mean he would become the Hokage of the village, if he follows Obito's orders and stuff. Although Obito has a way to double cross him while not also technically going against his word. I mean, Danso will become the Hokage, and is dreams. Meanwhile, Sasuke gets eye surgery while Naruto gets KCM, making them more deadly. The war commences, and Naruto is able to become MVP of the battlefield, like in canon, just like Joel and Beat in real life, while Sonata and Kakashi go fight Danzo and kill him. Why did team up Kakashi with Sonata? Because it's a fun scenario, especially since Kakashi and Sonata are a pretty decent matchup against Danzo. Because while Danzo is a bit slippery, War Kakashi is a different breed, and Sonata is also able to get the job done herself. Then, Madara appears on the battlefield, and will be a menace like in canon. He gets in some new jabs on Naruto, which are, well, it seems the Mutt has also learned how to use the power of the Nine Tail. And you might want to take that puppy off the battlefield, lest something happen to it. Naruto, of course, will try everything in power to deal with the man, but Madara just proves to be a bit too much, because Madara is him. Well, except when dealing with Black Zetsu, then he's reduced to being Patrick Ewing. The rest of the work remains the same, so now we can cut to the final battle with Kakia, which features Kakashi, Sasuke, Kiba, Hinata, and Naruto. Kakashi's on the battlefield because Kuronai can't really do any war things, and so Kakashi will be able to team up with Sasuke, who also gets the power of Black and Cannon, along with Naruto, Kiba, and Hinata. Sasuke is more so teaming up because, well, who wants to be stuck in a dream state? <laughs> Anyways, what is important here against the fight with Kage is what happens during the fight. It's more happens after Kage is sealed. Sasuke is still going to talk about revolution and all that mumbo jumbo, and Naruto decides to challenge Sasuke and intends to take him down permanently. The battle commences, and Naruto is going to have the edge throughout the entire fight because Naruto is not intending to save Sasuke, he is intending to kill. And in my personal opinion, and I think a lot of people will agree with this, is a lot easier to try to kill someone versus trying to capture them save them, whatever you want to call it. However, Sasuke is still a him himself, so Naruto and Sasuke are both down to their last leg. Yowan throughout the entire fight is still proven to be a menace to Sasuke, so Sasuke tries to go for the dog, but Naruto fires the Rasengan and makes sure that does not happen. Sasuke will say, damn it, just let me kill that damn mutt for once. And then Naruto's like, yeah, no. Also, why are you so obsessed with killing my dog? And Sasuke is like, because it's a nuisance. And Naruto's like, yeah, only to you. And then we move on to the final clash. Sasuke will say, this is it, Naruto. Naruto responds, yeah, it is. Maybe in another lifetime, you and I could have been friends, but not now. As much as I don't like doing this, I have to take you down for good. Go ahead and try, Sasuke yells as he unleashes his Chidori. Naruto fires up his Rasengan and the clash begins. Sasuke will end up breaking through and pierces Naruto through his chest. However, plot twist. It was a Shadow Clone. Naruto then comes screaming off the edge like he's a pass rusher and will fire up a Ross and Shuriken he was cooking up on the side. All Sasuke can do is laugh as he embraces death. Naruto hits Sasuke with the Ross and Shuriken and he will have his entire chakra network shred apart which caused him to die battle over naruto wins in a 4-0 sweep series over afterwards naruto decides to preserve sasuke's eyes in his honor that way they're a permanent reminder of what hatred breeds well the shrine eye he keeps a rank eye and has it implanted into his eye socket because eye surgery is pretty easy in naruto and why not during a time scale as well naruto and company have to deal with the remnants of donzo's root but they're able to deal with that pretty easily sakura has gone over sasuke and decides to go with a real alpha male or dog in kiba inazuka 
And unlike Sasuke, Kiba's gonna actually be able to raise her child because Kiba is him himself. At least in this what if. In the actual Naruto series, he is far from a him. So now we go to Jiraiya, meaning that our favorite pro finally wins, which is great because he's a him of V2. And then Naruto and Hinata will go for the entire Toneri stuff, and Naruto will still win pretty easily, like in canon. And Naruto also stops the moon chunks from falling onto the earth and will marry Hinata, like in canon. Nothing really too crazy there, just usual canon stuff. Eventually, Naruto and Hinata have have a kid in Boruto, and then they also have him in Wari, just like in initial timeline. Now, with Kiba and Sakura's kid, there were a bunch of names that I was pretty torn on, but I decided on a daughter in Aika Inuzuka. Now, meanwhile, Sumei unfortunately doesn't win, and Hana, did she even get with anybody at all? I don't think Hana actually got with anybody, which is kind of sad. And best of all, Naruto helps motivate Anko to keep in shape. Why would this happen in a what if about what if Naruto's Inuzuka? Mm, well, it's nothing really related. I just, I'm still more in the fact that Anko's now fat. It was so amazing in original Naruto. And then Boruto happened. Huh, that's the one thing I can never forgive Boruto for. It's what they did to both Anko and Mei. Man, that, that hurt. Anyways, before I end off the series, let me know if you want me to go into Boruto because there is no Sasuke. I mean, that Naruto is essentially doing all of the work. Plus, who is going to be Boruto Sensei? And that is going to be an interesting question that I'll leave up to you in the comments below if you want me to go into Boruto. But before I end off this video, let me ask you guys a question today. Do you think Sasuke should have died in the original Naruto series? Now, I know a lot of people are going to be like, you know, no, absolutely not. He's the dual antagonist and blah, blah, blah. And personally, I don't think he should have died either. I feel like Sasuke at least had a route for redemption arc, but I know a lot of people didn't really like Sasuke in the arc with him essentially joining the Akaski and a lot of his mental stuff and whatever. I know a lot of people also haven't really had the most positive opinion about Sasuke at all. Now, personally, again, I disagree with this, but maybe you have your own opinion on this topic that is well articulated and such, and you can voice that in the comments below if you like. I'm always open to hear other people's opinions on anything but that is about it for part eight slash the finale of what if naruto was in yuzuka yeah a little bit of a rush fending but we'll also remain the same plus i think a lot of people were a little bit surprised that sasuke died in this timeline but i wanted to switch it up a little bit but anyways shout out to my 10 patrons there on screen my tour patrons gave to a nice lasher shout out to you guys for watching the video and watching until the end shout out to my social media on screen and that is about it for this series if you want wars by the way such as the shouts i did earlier go to my patreon just link in the description and that's about it this is your boy the mc sign peace your ha cue that outro bye bye